Hallelujah. Spirit of the sovereign God, this morning we give God thanks and we give him praise. We thank him for the wonderful opportunity to be in his presence once more. And I am Reverend Judith Walcott, and I greet you in no other name but the precious and risen name of our Lord and soon coming King Jesus Christ. I also bring you greetings from our pastor, Bishop M. Roy Sampson, and we are members of the Bethel and Bethany Pentecostal Tabernacles. We are member churches of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. And we are happy that you are with us today. Those of you who are viewing from Trinidad and Tobago, those of you who are viewing from New York, those of you who are viewing from California, those of you who are viewing from England, those of you who are viewing from Nigeria, wherever you are viewing from, we are happy and we are delighted to have you with us. We are happy that you have invited us into your homes today, hallelujah. We give God all the glory and we give him all the praise. Father, this morning we just worship your name. We extol you because you are great and greatly to be praised. There is none like you, O oh God, and there is none that can be compared like unto you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are the same God. And Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence with us. We say you are welcome in this place, even as your words will go forth. God, that the anointing will break every yoke today. You will touch hearts and lives and minds. Even as your people hear your word, they will respond to your word. I pray today, God, that your word will bring deliverance. It will bring salvation. It will bring healing today in the mighty name of Jesus. That some life, some soul will be saved today and we say thank you in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah this morning I want to share from the book of 2nd Thessalonians chapter 3 and I want to read verses 16 to 18 2nd Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 16 to 18 now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means the lord be with you all the salutation of all with my own hand which is a token in every epistle so i write the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all amen and this morning i want to share on the team knowing the peace of god knowing the peace of God. And it is so important, it is so critical that we know the peace of God today. We live in a season where we need the peace of Almighty God. Hallelujah. And the book of 2 Thessalonians is one of Paul's Pauline epistles. And the key persons in this book and the Apostle Paul, Silas, and Timothy. And Paul wrote this letter to re-emphasize the coming return of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the reason for doing this was owing to the fact that so many of the brethren thought that Christ had already returned. And this letter was written to correct any misunderstanding and I'm here to tell you this morning that Christ has not returned as yet but he will return someday in chapter 1 when we look at 1st Thessalonians Paul highlights the great hope of Jesus return and as believers we look forward to that great and glorious day when Christ will put in his appearance and although the exact date is not known by anyone, what we know is the fact that Christ will return. His return is very eminent. It is right there. And I know you would probably say, you know, since I was a child, 
I heard my parents saying that the Lord is coming, that Jesus is coming. Yes, he is coming. His coming is imminent today. Hallelujah. The hour of his return is very near. Paul also commends the church at Thessalonica for their perseverance in the midst of persecution according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. In Paul's second epistle to the church, this second epistle served as a follow-up to the first letter. And Paul's first letter was well received by the brethren and they accepted the explanations given by Paul regarding those who did die and those who were ready and willing to suffer persecution in order to remain true to the gospel that he had preached. Hallelujah. However, though, some of the members, they were overzealous about his preaching and they had stopped made plans for the future. Brethren, we cannot stop make plans for the future. They forgot, according to Luke chapter 19, verse 13, that we should occupy till he comes. And the word of God declares that to us, that we ought to occupy until Jesus comes. There is work to be done this morning. Hallelujah. Some had stopped working believing that they were demonstrating their faith and those who did not work were a burden to those who work and Paul sought to correct this in his second epistle hallelujah and Paul commences chapter 3 by requesting prayer and indicating that the word of God will have Course. The church was experiencing persecutions from without and within, and Paul encourages them to separate themselves from disorderly brothers. Paul, talk, Paul spoke to the church about disciplined living, and he addresses the sin of idleness in the lives of some. But he ends with a beautiful and a tremendous and wonderful commendation to the church. And this is where I want to put my focus on, on verse 17. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you. And this peace that Paul spoke about is that inner assurance that comes from the master knowing it is well in spite of my circumstances, in spite of what I am going through. There is a peace that I experience in the inner part of me and I know that it is well in spite of. And this is the peace that Paul was referring to. What Paul did, he commences with the use of a three-letter word, that word now. And that word now indicates that it's a present tense, but it also shows the transition to a new thought, hallelujah. So what Paul did, was to shift the emphasis from those causing the problems. He shifts from trials and persecutions that the church was experiencing. And he stated to them exactly what he wanted God to do for them today. He says to them that in the midst of your persecution, in the midst of your distress, in the midst of whatever you are experiencing, in the midst of whatever you are going through, the Lord of peace is able to give you peace today. Hallelujah. And this morning, I'm here to remind us that in the midst of whatever you are experiencing, 
experiencing in the midst of lockdown, in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of unemployment, in the midst of death all around us, in the face of gloominess and despair, the Lord of peace is able to give us peace today. The Lord of peace is able to give you and I his peace today. Hallelujah. John 14, verse 27. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And I want to reiterate the words of the apostle today. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And these are not my words, but this is the unadulterated word of God on which we can place our confidence in today. Hallelujah. And I notice that about three to four times, the Lord gives the assurance that he is the one who is capable to give us peace today. You see, we cannot give ourselves peace. And I cannot give you peace this morning, but the Lord God Almighty, He is able to give you peace today. Hallelujah. You do not have to be afraid. Those of you who are viewing, you do not have to be afraid this morning and declare based on the word of God, you do not need to be afraid because the Lord of peace is with you. And yes, we are surrounded by so many different things that would cause us to be afraid. But the word of God encourages us not to be afraid this morning. Glory be to God. There is no need to be afraid when Almighty God and give us peace today. Hallelujah. Paul uses the Hebrew word shalom, which means harmony, completeness, tranquility. And he is saying that the Lord of peace, the master and ruler of peace, the one who is the very embodiment of peace, will give unto you tranquility in the midst of your storms this morning, in the midst of whatever you are going through. The God of peace, the Lord of tranquility, Jehovah Shalom, is able to give you peace today. Hallelujah. I do not know what storm or storms you are experiencing. But I know that God is able to give you peace. I speak the peace of God upon you today, hallelujah. And we're doing a little word study this morning. Paul also uses the word himself. What is he saying to us when he used that word himself? And he's also referring to Almighty God. He is saying that the God himself will personally give of his peace. This is what Paul is saying to the church. That God himself will personally give of his peace. And he uses a reflective pronoun to show that God was the one who will do it. Nobody else but Almighty God. You see, God is not sending a messenger. While I might be the messenger to preach his gospel, I am unable to give you peace. God is not sending an angel to give you peace. 
He is not sending one of your friends to bring peace to you, but he, God himself, he will personally give unto you peace today, peace in the midst of your storm. Hallelujah. I am here to let you know that God himself wants to give you his peace. He's not sending somebody with it. No, they wouldn't be able to bring it to you. But God personally will give you of his peace today. The God of peace guaranteed to give you his peace personally. Hallelujah. That's the word of God that we can stand secure upon. In this season of COVID-19, in this season of lockdown and isolation, in this season of economic downturn, it's important that we know the peace of God. It's important not only to know the peace of God, but to have the peace of God. And it is also important to know the peace of God today. In the midst of the storm, Jesus was able to say to the wind and the wave, peace be still. And sometimes we, are, we experience storms and you might just be experiencing a storm this morning. And contrary wind seems to be blowing in your direction. Under the unction of the Holy Spirit, I rebuke every contrary wind, every contrary storm that you are being faced with. And I declare the peace of God upon you today in the name of Jesus. Right where you are, you can receive the peace of God. Hallelujah. I pray that you will receive God's peace today. You see, Paul's assurance of peace to the church at Thessalonica is the same assurance we have today. And this is a tremendous assurance, especially in the light of all that is happening globally. God has given his personal assurance of peace. That is so wonderful to know that God has given us his personal assurance of peace. But when we have peace today, we can access the peace of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3, it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. You see, in order to experience this peace, our minds must be stayed and focused on Almighty God. And there are times the enemy will want to send distractions. But I pray today that our minds will be focused and stayed on Almighty God. Glory be to God. I notice also that Paul uses the word peace twice. You see, we must know the peace of God before we can know peace with God. And I want to repeat that again. We must know the peace of God before we can know peace with God. You see, peace with God flows from peace with Almighty God. Peace with God flows from peace with God. Do you have that peace this morning? Do you have this peace that I am speaking about? This peace is available to you. Glory be to Jesus. Paul says to the church, may he always by all means. And this word always indicates at all times, permanently. He is saying to them, and by extension to us, that a continuous flow of God's peace is available. Brethren, a continuous flow of God's peace is available to us this morning. Paul is letting the church know 
that in the midst of whatever they were going through, they were able to experience God's peace at all times. Is it possible to experience the peace of God at all times? Yes, it is possible based on the word of God, based on your relationship with Almighty God, to experience the peace of God at all times. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You see, Paul and Silas knew and experienced that peace. At midnight they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them according to Acts 16.25. In spite of being beaten, in spite of being thrown in prison, they experienced the peace of God and they were able to sing praises at midnight. You see, I don't know what they sang. Probably they sang righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. Or probably they would have lifted their hands and said, You deserve it. I don't know what they sang this morning. But what I know is the fact that when they sang, prison doors were opened. Foundation was shaken. It caused shackles to fall off. It caused lives to be saved. In spite of the contrary wind that was blowing, they found time to sing praises unto Almighty God. You see, Paul and Silas knew the God of peace and they knew the peace of God. Hallelujah. Daniel knew what it was to experience this peace that Paul also spoke about. You see, Daniel, we would know the story. He was thrown into the lion's den. His colleagues came up and couldn't find anything to say bad about him, but only about the God that he served. The word of God tells us that an excellent spirit was found in him. But when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, the word of God said that he opened his windows as he did in a full times. And he knelt before the God of heaven. And because of his faith in almighty God, we know that Daniel was thrown in the lion's den today. But God was able to shut the mouth of every lion today in the name of Jesus. The contrary went blow, but he knew the God of peace. And he knew the peace of God today. Do you know that peace I'm talking about? Hallelujah. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they also knew and experienced the peace. And we would know the account when Nebuchadnezzar would have built an image and he would have said to them, when you hear the sound of the famous music, you would fall and you would go to your knees and you would worship me. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they remember what the word of God said, that thou shalt have no other God but me. And they did not bow their knees to the king idol today. And we don't have to bow our knees to any other God. Our knees should only be bowed to Almighty God. The king was so furious that he sent and he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave the orders to fuck the furnace seven times hotter. But in spite of the furnace being hot seven times hotter, they said, King, we don't care to answer you in this regard because the God we serve, he is more than able to deliver us. And even though he doesn't deliver us, we are not going to bow to your statue today. And as we know, they were thrown into the burning fiery furnace. And what I noticed is that this heathen king, he asks the question, did we throw three men in there? He said, but I see a fourth man and the fourth man looked like the son of God. The fourth man is always with us today. Glory be to God. When he saw the fourth man, he himself called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He 
say you come and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they came out unhurt because they knew the God of peace. And they knew what it is to have peace with Almighty God. Hallelujah. Do you know this peace? Have you experienced the peace of God in your lives today? Hallelujah. Paul also understood this peace that he wrote about in 2 Corinthians 11, 24 to 27. He said, and I'm paraphrasing, he said he was beaten with rods. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. But yet he was still able to experience the peace of God. And he was able to experience the peace of God because he knew the order of peace personally today. Do you know the order of peace? Personally, you see, in order to experience the peace that I am speaking about, you must know the God of peace today. And as I indicated before, it is possible to know the God of peace in times of difficulties because peace of God comes from peace with God. And last week I heard a young woman testifying that in spite of the fact that her son was in the hospital, she said that she was able to sense and to know the peace of God. That peace which told her that everything is going to be alright. And this is the peace I am talking about. That peace that only God could give. That peace in spite of your circumstances. In spite of your storm. You know that you know that it is Sakura Kanda. That it Kiketunda Nabaki Enderebeke. That it is well because of the God you serve. You know the peace of God. Hallelujah. You see, we are encouraged to let the peace of God reign in our hearts. And Colossians chapter 3 verse 15, it says, And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Paul concludes verse 16 by saying, The Lord be with you. He gives his blessings and doxology by assuring the church that the Lord was with them. And today the Lord is with you. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, he is with us today. Paul also uses the word be and he's saying to them, the Lord is with you. The Lord will be with you and the Lord will continue to be with you. And I just want to repeat it again. I just want to give you the assurance today, believers, that the Lord is with you. The Lord will be with you and the Lord will continue to be with you. His promises are sure. He said he will never leave us or forsake us. We have that confidence this morning that the God of peace will go Makka will never leave us today. You see, this peace is available to you this morning. This peace is also available to me. The God of peace is peace and he gives peace this morning. The God of peace is peace and he gives peace today in the name of Jesus. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. It talks about the fruit of the spirit and peace was also included as one of the fruit of the Spirit. You see, you don't just get peace like that. You've got to know the God of peace 
in a personal way. You gotta know him personally in order to experience his peace. You gotta allow him to place his peace in you. And you can get his peace by spending time in his words, meditating on his words, reading his words, declaring his words, believing what his word says today. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to end with the words of the Apostle Paul. Now the Lord of peace himself Give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you. And for those of you who are viewing, I do not know what you are faced with. I do not know the turmoil that you are experiencing right now. What I know is the fact that we are experiencing a worldwide pandemic which would cause us and could cause us to be afraid. What I know is that death is lurking all around. What I know is the fact that there is a health crisis. There is an economic crisis. What I know is the fact that there are people without jobs. There are people without food. There are people who are destroying their idols. But this morning I came to present the good news of Jesus Christ to you. Hallelujah. The God of peace is able to give you his peace this morning. In the midst of the crisis, allow the God of peace to give you his peace today. As I said before, he is not sending a messenger, but he wants to personally give you of his peace. And probably you're viewing and you're looking at us and you are not saved. You do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Right there in your home, you can come to know him who is life eternal today. Hallelujah. All you need to do is to confess your sins. All you need to say is, God, forgive me, cleanse me and wash me in your precious blood. Forgive me for all of my sins. And he is able to do that today. The songwriter said, time clock is striking the hour. Jesus was soon the same today. And I want to let you know that now is a good time to give your heart to Jesus Christ today. Glory be to God. Now is a good time to say, God, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. If you have repeated those words, rest assured that your sins are forgiven. And probably for those of you who are saved, you have not been experiencing the peace of God. I want you to know that God himself, God personally wants to give you his peace this morning. I want to pray for you today. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. This morning we thank you, Lord. We thank you because you are the God of peace. You want to give us of your peace personally today. I pray for those who would have received you, that your peace would flood their souls today. Give them the assurance of salvation. Give them the assurance of your peace today. Even for your people, God, wherever they are, let the peace of God rule in their hearts today. Oh God, let there be a divine visitation today, God, that in the midst of their storms, in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of the bad news of God, they can experience your peace today. Let your peace reign in our hearts today, Father. We receive your peace today, Almighty God. Wherever you are in your homes today, receive the peace of God because it is available to you today. Shatanamake. He said, Oh God, I release the peace of God upon your people.
people today. Strengthen them today, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And oh God, we will not fail to give you the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to read that first again for us today. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means the Lord be with you all and the Lord be with you this morning hallelujah this morning is also our communion service and we want to go into the communion today I trust that you have your emblems ready probably you have your bread or you have biscuits whatever you have we are going to use it today and i'm reading from first corinthians chapter 11 from verses 23. he says for i have received of the lord that which also i deliver unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me. So let us partake together. Glory be to Jesus. We're doing this in remembrance of what was paid, the price that was paid for us on the cross of Calvary today. The word of God said, and after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had stopped saying, this cup is the new testament or the new agreement in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us partake together. Glory be to God. We do this in remembrance. By his stripes, we are healed today. Glory be to Jesus. As often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. So, Father, we thank you for your shed blood. And we thank you for your broken body today. Let there be healing. Let there be restoration today. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be deliverance. And we just want to say thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Well, brethren, it was, brethren, it was good being here with you. And may the God of peace continue to be your peace today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.